You sir? Yep. All right, adequate notice of this October the 10th, 2019 meeting has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act by posting written notice and agenda of this meeting on the bulletin board in this municipal building, 1000 Route 10, Township of Hanover, by hand delivering, mailing, or faxing such notice and agenda to the following newspapers, Morris County's Daily Record, the Star Ledger, Hanover Eagle, and by filing same with the Township Clerk. We have a roll call. Committee Man Gallagher. Here. Committee Man Ferramosca. Here. Committee Man Mahalko. Here. Committee Man Cahill. Here. And Mayor Francioli. Here. Five members in attendance, sir. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, would you all please rise and join me in a pledge of allegiance to the flag? Please remain standing for a prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Almighty God, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and the general welfare for all of the people of Hanover Township. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We also like to take a moment to remember a good friend of Hanover Township who recently passed, and that is Senator Anthony Bucco, who will always be remembered fondly in this town, represented us well. Okay. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, at this time I'm going to put into the record some guidelines which we have used in the past, but it's good that we reinforce it. They are as follows. Before we open tonight's proceedings, I'm going to advise the following. Uh, please cooperate by turning off cell phones, vibrating devices, or devices of that nature. That would be a good start. Township Committee will entertain comments uh, from the public uh, on, a, uh, on a subject that's beginning and uh, ending at tonight's meeting. We'll open the meeting at the beginning of this meeting, and we'll open the meeting, as I have often said, at the end of the meeting. You'll have two opportunities in which to address the Township Committee uh, at both of those. <clears throat> If you have a comment about an ordinance <clears throat> that is scheduled for a public hearing this evening, please wait until we could be in the public hearing. Uh, matter of fact, there are several ordinances this evening uh, that will be introduced, and the explanation to that will be given to you in a moment. Uh, when you address the Township Committee, as we have often said, please do so from the podium, uh, giving us your name and address for the record. Uh, all speakers will be allowed four minutes. <clears throat> You can make a statement either at the public portion of the meeting, the beginning of the meeting, or at the end of the meeting, or when an ordinance comes in before the governing body for public hearing. Speakers will only be given one opportunity to address the Township Committee. If you have a specific question, it may, be, it may not be answered during the meeting. Occasionally questions require research, and if that's the case, someone will return to you, someone will get back to you, the administrator will respond to you. The chair and members of the governing body may not respond to questions already answered or redundant by any other of the other speakers. Uh, as a reminder, the regular meetings of this township committee are videotaped, uh, broadcast on Optima's channel 21 between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. on Saturdays and on YouTube and please also take note for emergency purposes that this room has two exits in the front and the back of the meeting room for emergency purposes. Thank you all for that. Okay, now on that note, gentlemen, I would like to begin the first portion of opening the meeting right now, so a motion to open. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the meeting is open. Anyone would like to address the Township Committee at this time can do so from the podium. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody, gentlemen and lady. Oh, Dennis, Dennis. hold that microphone up. I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah, we're not. Okay, there you go. Name is Dennis Fashano, 39 Forest Way. I'm here tonight to speak about some uh, information regarding our uh, Hanover Township Economic uh, Committee and our uh, Green Team Environmental Committee, I meant. Uh, first thing I want to do, since I have four minutes, is to quickly mm -hmm. remind everybody that on 
the, 20, the 2nd of November at the community parking lot, we have Shred Day. Mm. Uh, another Shred Day. We had one back in June. Got over 4,500 pounds. The thing about our Shred Day is that uh, there's no limit on the amount of poundage you can bring. Uh, there are restrictions and requirements, and it's open to Hanover Township residents and municipal employees uh, only. Um, and if you want, when you put your shredding in, you could actually watch it, watch it get done. So that'll be on November 2nd in the community center. <clears throat> Another important thing that uh, I need to speak about is something that uh, the MUA is promoting. It's called Tag It and Leave It. Um, as we know, we have a single stream recycling, which means everything mm -hmm. is put into one bin, paper, cardboard, etc. However, over the course of the last year or two, the uh, rules have changed on a lot of, of items, and what uh, MUA is concerned about is that there's items that are being put into the recycling bins that are not really allowed, such as plastic bags, plastic film, pa plastic packaging, styrofoam, hangers, food waste, food scraps. And what they're trying to do, uh, and there again is a brochure on this, and, and by the way, this, the uh, Shred Day and some environmental information for a uh, single stream will be posted at the uh, some municipal offices. I'm due to get some of uh, those flyers tomorrow. Um, for the Tag It, Leave It, which is also on the website, um, <clears throat> the most common pro problematic uh, unacceptable materials, as I just mentioned, are going to be examined as they come in and look at our collections. Uh, for example, we used to put in three, four, six, seven, as well as one, two, and five. Those are the bottles with the little triangle and the numbers on them. Mm. Only one, two, and five are acceptable. So uh, what will happen, and this is read in the uh, brochure, residents will have to correct the issues and wait until next scheduled collection day to put their now acceptable recyclables out for curbside collection because what MUA is gonna do is examine uh, garbage cans. I'm not sure when it's gonna start. It was actually supposed to start in uh, the, the summer. It's looking to be starting momentarily I will maybe find that out tomorrow uh, at an MUA luncheon I'm attending uh, and I just want to make sure all the residents realize uh, to recycle properly uh, I'll talk a little more about where you can recycle some of these other items but these are the brochures that as we all know um, the do's and the don'ts I urge you to read them uh, the third thing is, is also, uh, as I'm relating to, uh, one of the problems about putting plastic bags uh, and other film items is that uh, stores such as Wegmans, um, the Coles, Stop and Shop, ShopRite, uh, Walmart, are, have bins. You probably have all seen them as you go by the, uh, the stores. They accept the plastic bags, but they also accept items on this list, which include dry cleaning bags food storage bags, everything has to be clean and dry, newspaper bags, which we all have, produce bags, plastic shipping envelopes, case wrap, for example, if you get uh, toilet paper in a, in a, in a wrapping, uh, that wrapping can be recycled in a bag and over at these stores. So that is an important part of the recycling that, again, if that is seen in the uh, MUA recyclable containers at your home, you're going to tag it and leave it. Another thing I want to talk about is uh, a, a letter that was sent on October 7th to the Township Committee, um, and I'll read it. This year during Hanover Township Day, the Green Team Environmental Committee uh, asked residents who visited our booth to fill out a single survey question. Uh, the question was, should Hanover Township ban single-use plastic bags? I know it's a small sample, but we received 268 responses, of which 77% or 206 cent said yes. Uh, and the letter went on to say the Green Team Environmental Commission unanimously support the uh, elimination of single-use plastic bags. While 268 responses is a small portion of the township, it is the right thing to do. Uh, we, we formally request the Township Committee to take this under advisement. We had a meeting on Monday, our committee, and what we're doing on the committee, we're examining some of the ordinances that are already out there. Chatham, Parsippany locally have ordinances, and believe it or not, Paramus. Paramus is the highest zip code in retail sales in the country, and they have over 700 stores, so they have something in place. Um, what I'm trying to do, this is part of it, is to educate the public that uh, we really need to 
save and reuse the plastic bags. And, I, and as I'm reading from an ANJAC, which is the uh, Association of New Jersey Environmental Commissions, the average American uses 500 plastic bags. So just throwing them out is a, is a big negative. Recycling them is good, and reusing them is also as well. Um, if anybody have seen 60 Minutes or any of the shows, uh, plastic bags take years, many years, <coughs> to uh, disintegrate. And as well, the plastic is also <coughs> eaten by fish, and actually eventually we eat, the, we, eat, we eat this stuff. So I know it's almost impossible to eliminate everything, but if anybody, you know, if everybody could save uh, a bag a day, for example, and maybe cut back on a few hundred bags, and this spreads across the state, because I think there are 70 municipalities that have some sort of uh, ordinances about recycling these type of bags, uh, then we could, you know, do a lot well to, better to save the environment. And the last thing <clears throat> to uh, mention to you is something called RecycleCoach.com. It's an app. It's an app that is, uh, you can get under www.RecycleCoach.com. And what it does, it, uh, if you put your address in, it'll, uh, it does the research for you and asks for the item that you want to consider. Let's say I said, geez, you know, I don't know if styrofoam is, we know it's banned. Put that in there and they'll say you cannot recycle it, you have to throw it out. Um, it does, it, it works very well, it actually tells you your schedule for recycling, I know most of us know that, most of us know that, but it is something that uh, I have on my app and um, you could look up any item and say, well, you know, is this something that recyclable item in the town or whatever, but uh, we are connected to that. Again, it's RecycleCoach.com and uh, hopefully it's something everybody could start looking at or a lot of people could start looking at. And in general, hopefully we can uh, cut down on a lot of the, the waste and recycle properly and not cause a lot of angst for the NUA. Uh, I really wanted to make sure, again, on that tag it and leave it, that the information is out there because I don't want a lot of the residents surprised. And I know they put out some press releases. It's in the website, like I said. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we could uh, have everybody try to comply and still recycle. You know, sometimes you get a little lazy because now it's single stream, meaning, like I said, one, one, uh, everything is mixed together as opposed to uh, double stream where we used to separate the cardboard and, and the plastic. But again, you've got to be concerned with what, what exactly is being allowed. So uh, with that, I'll end. I hope I made my four minutes. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Dennis, I, th I thank you uh, for that public service announcement. And... Uh, I know uh, some of our surrounding communities are already adopting ordinances banning plastic bags, Parsippany being one of them that just did. Uh, we are encouraging use of uh, reusable bags, uh, and uh, that's our position at this point, but I'm sure we'd like to see uh, any recommendations from the Green Team, et cetera, as to what we possibly could do to strengthen that ordinance as well. John? Definitely. We'd like to thank uh, the yeah. Environmental Commission and Green Team for their initiatives. Uh, for those <coughs> of you who might not know it, Hanover is one of the the, uh, the exception uh, municipalities in terms of being ranked as a silver municipality in terms of um, New Jersey sustainability. So keep up the good work. We thank you for all your efforts. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bob Flynn. Uh, I work with Jersey Central Power and Light. Uh, I wanted to come tonight just to introduce myself. I have uh, just started actually within the last five months. So. Uh, right now making my way out to I have uh, 30 towns with Jersey Central that I'm the liaison with so I have most of Morris County all of Passaic County one town in Essex one town in Somerset so uh, right now kind of doing a big circuit of all my towns just putting a face with the name if you see any of our outage notifications um, we are doing a few things in town as well uh, we've gone to the BPU for a grant for 97 million dollars it's a two-phase project, uh, and essentially what that entails is increased vegetation management. So we'll be trimming some of the more dead overhang of our wires to improve reliability, as well as a device that is a smart cutout. So essentially, if you ever look up at the power lines and you've lost your power, you'll see a fuse that drops down. It's sensed to fault somewhere along the line. The next step of that is a line shop dispatching a troubleshooter to inspect that whole circuit find the fault, make the necessary repairs, pop that fuse back into place. So this device is called a trip saver and its name is kind of exactly what it does. It saves us a trip from 
uh, instead of what's a lengthy process of that troubleshooter inspecting sometimes a length of circuit, which is miles. Uh, this is a device that is smart technology that will sense a fault. If a branch comes down on it, the line, the fuse will pop open. This device will actually reset itself into place and what normally could be a two to three hour outage will now be a five minute outage. So it's a device that our, uh, our, yeah, our smart engineers in our Marstown office have essentially looked at a compiled list of where our most problem circuits, where we constantly having to send <laughs> troubleshooters out to. So that list they have compiled to put these devices in. So as that completes, I'll start to make my rounds again and kind of provide an update on where we've placed them. And then hopefully uh, the completion of this project will be done by the end of 2020. So uh, we're hoping at the end of that, the Board of Public Utilities looks at our reliability statistics and sees that there is an improvement and we can further expand upon some of these devices as well as further trimming in these areas. So. <laughs> Again, just really wanted to come and introduce myself and put a name with the face. Um, last piece is a very fun piece. If there's things in town that JCPNL can be involved in, whether it's a sponsorship for a 5K or something like that, please keep us in mind. I know the mayor and Joe have my email as well as a couple other people here in town, so please feel free to reach out to me and look forward to working with you. Thank you, Bob. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Certainly a familiar face in Hanover you were with the governor's <laughs> office for quite a while, too. Yes. So uh, we've known each other. You're working with Tom Quirk. Yes. Uh, on our emergency management team, and we're tightening up our communications there uh, with issues that we have in emergency situations, and we thank you for all your cooperation. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. See you soon. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Steven Chen. Um, I'm here tonight to uh, represent a Nico restaurant. Um, <coughs> Uh, actually, I'm representing all the partner at Nico Restaurant. Um, recently, um, a settlement agreement uh, between um, Township of Hanover and uh, JMF uh, company. Um, they have a settlement that include Nico um, as that the J JFM as the uh, purchase, um, you know, the, uh, the purchase party. Um, <coughs> And in the contract, it states that um, JFM is a contract purchase of property of block 4001, last 6, and also 7, uh, 9, partial 10, 11, 12, and 14. So um, I was um, asked by the partner to, um, you know, to clear the air and also as a public record that uh, Nico currently, at this moment, had no um, contract or agreement with uh, J JMF, you know, uh, property uh, company. Yeah, so, you know, just wanted to clarify that. Um, the reason for the settlement or anything like that, uh, we had no idea. We just feel that we need to, you know, speak up and at least let the public know, you know, what's going on with the uh, Nico. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Floor remains open. <clears throat> Speak now since we're limited to four minutes. Just want to uh, make a general comment that I've noticed on. Sir, can you have your name and address? Yep. Please? Douglas Seaman, 48 Washington Ave, Whippany section. That noticed again alerts are great appreciate those coming out for a good system but i've noticed something with the alerts where we will get an update with an agenda and me for one uh, single parent work 12 14 hours i will go in download the agenda review it make my comments and then several hours later or in the case of today a brand new agenda is sent out on alert in this case with 16 ordinances added to it and just trying to understand how that's happening or why that's happening well because the agenda is a fluid document and it changes from day to day as we have more ordinances prepared by our consultants we have to add those to the agenda there's nothing in the law that prohibits us from doing that. 
you're required by law to give 48 hours notice of all our agendas, which we do. And in fact, we publish the full uh, meeting dates of the agendas at the beginning of the year in January. So when we do individual uh, agendas, we work on the agenda as a draft document. And it keeps getting changed day to day based on the information that we get to include on the agenda for the township committee. Okay, appreciate that. It goes back to the last meeting when I spoke. I think it brings into question transparency, trying to be open. Uh, when you post, hot, I'll call them hot topic ordinances the day of the meeting when they weren't on the original post, uh, I think it brings into question uh, the timing of those. I can't imagine that some of these ordinances weren't known the day before that they were going to be brought up, uh, especially when they're posted at 1030 in the morning. Uh, on well, the you order. have to realize, as I said before, some of these ordinances need to be addressed on a daily basis as we get them from our professionals and there have to be modifications to those ordinances. So we work on them diligently every day so that we can provide the agenda to the public. So in no way are we trying to hide anything, sir. We're trying to provide the agenda as much as we can in as much time as we can. And because we have a deadline to meet with the court, we're trying to meet that deadline. And that's December the 12th. Okay. Your word is not mine. I didn't use the word hide, but appreciate it. I, I, I'm Thank sorry. You. you didn't use the word what? I didn't use the word hide. I just said the word transparency. Well, it can be a matter of interpretation, sir. Sure. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> Floor remains open. <clears throat> Hello. Oops. Terry, how are you? Terry, um, okay. Terry Baird, 180 Persephone Road in the Whippany section of Hanover. Um, I have a few questions in reference to those new uh, ordinances that will be... Uh, Terry, I'm going I'm to stop you for one second, no, only because I have to, there needs to be some explanation on introduction. Stay with me. Uh, Rob, you want to go over something? If you're going to ask on the ordinances, I'd rather you, you, you hear a procedure on that. Okay. I can actually, I think, speak to uh, the question of the previous questioner and also to your question, Terry, and that's um, that these ordinances that, uh, in, and I know, Douglas, that your question more had to do with the noticing about the ordinances, but all of the additional ordinances uh, that you were referring to, basically, these ordinances are on for introduction tonight, is, I'm sure you realize. Uh, they'll be up for adoption on November the 14th, and there will be a full hearing on that date of these ordinances. In a moment, when Joe introduces these ordinances, I'm going to give a really brief synopsis of at least a handful of them. And Terry, I think those are probably the ones you're referring to that relate to affordable housing and the pilot agreement. I'll be giving kind of a synopsis on those, but we won't actually be having a question and answer on the ordinances that are up for introduction tonight. That will take place on November 14th, when everybody will be able to be fully heard on all of the ordinances. Okay, I just my, let me ask my question, and then you can tell me whether or not sure. I'll hear it now or later, or never. Um, uh, the block and lots. I'd like to know what the block and lot numbers are for 43 and for 44. Will you be telling us what the block and lots will be for those? For two? 43 and ordinance 43 and ordinance 44. Yeah. Uh, well, first. Actually, you know what, I think I should, we should adhere to what I said, which is uh, to wait until we get to the introduction of the ordinances, because I will be able to touch on you it will. very briefly in my introduction. Okay, I, pre I appreciate yep. you, you doing that. Okay, and then um, in, in relation to um, uh, what uh, the, the gentleman from Nikos was saying, in reference to them being a contract purchaser in the um, settlement agreement with JMF, my question is that the fair share ha agreement that you have dated February 5th um, only included lots 11, 12, and 14. And on March 22nd, which is like six weeks later, maybe seven weeks later, um, it includes six, seven, part of nine, 10, 11, 12, and 14. Um, how did those additional lots get included in just five or six short weeks when you already had an agreement with fair share on February 5th. 
Terry, I'll, I'll actually just ask you really quickly, um, could you please, and this is one of those things that we might have to come back to you with and you might have to follow up with Joe Giorgio about, but could you please read the two dates that you read off just a moment ago and then the lots that you understood to be included in the fair share agreement on, on each of those two dates? Certainly. On February 5th, <laughs> um, February 5th, 2019. February, yeah, well, the, the uh, fair share is dated February 5th, but it was signed on different dates. Okay. okay. Um, on that one, it includes uh, block 4001, lots 11, 12, 14, and then the B8803.17. Okay. Right. And on March 22nd, the JMF settlement agreement uh, includes blocks 4001, lots 6 and 7, which are Nico's, part of 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, and the 880317. So there were an additional one, two, three additional properties added when you already had an agreement with fair share on the previous one. So I'm wondering, my question to you is how did these additional lots get chosen to be put into a settlement agreement with a developer when with fair share you already had a settlement agreement for those? Your question is understood. I'm going to have to go back and take a look at it. We'll touch base with Joe and you'll be able to coordinate with Joe and we'll get you an answer on that. Okay. And then a follow-up to that is that um, JMF is listed in his settlement agreement as a contract purchaser um, for those particular lots, but for 13, he's considered a party of interest, and that's Midas Muffler. So um, that was an also additional thing in there as a party of interest, but he's not listed as a contract purchaser, where in the fair share housing, he's listed as contract purchaser as well as his JMF settlement agreement. You're saying as of one of the dates, JMF is listed as contract purchaser, and as the other date is listed as party of interest? Uh, for Midas, he's listed as a party of interest. Yeah. So that's an additional lot to the settlement agreement as on March 22nd. Understood. Okay. All right. We'll have to get back to you on that also. Okay. I think we need to coordinate with Blaze on these agreements to okay. see where the changes took place. And also, a little addition, if when you're going to do your um, it, those... Uh, uh, ordinances. If you could please explain what AH2 and AH3 are, as well as RM6, those zones. Noted. Okay. And also, can you tell us when the ordinances will be available for us to actually read and, and hold in our hand and look at? Joe, we'll uh, we'll be able to. If we don't, if we can't address that tonight, we'll be able to. Joe will be able to get information about that very shortly. Okay. Once, when the, ordinances once the ordinances are introduced by the township committee. Once again, in the interest of transparency, the law requires that those ordinances be made available free of charge to the public. <clears throat> so you can pick up copies in my office tomorrow. Okay. They will also appear in the daily record, published in full in the daily record, and posted on the bulletin board. Okay. But all ordinances, once they're introduced by the governing body, again, in the interest of transparency, <clears throat> are available for public inspection. Okay. Free of charge. I'll see you tomorrow morning. That's fine. <laughs> Thank Look you. forward to seeing you, Terry. Thank you, Terry. The floor remains open if anyone else would like to address the Township Committee. Seeing none. Hearing none. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Administrator. Okay, we have the approval of the Township Committee minutes of September 17th, 2019. May we have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. A motion by Mr. Furamaska, seconded by Mr. Gallagher. On roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Furamaska. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. Mr. Cahill. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Now, as we proceed, ladies and gentlemen, we have two la uh, letters for communications. And um, the first is <coughs> submission by Patrolman Edward Sanchez. Um, it's addressed to Chief Roddy, dated September 26th. Dear Chief Roddy, please accept this letter of resignation from the position of police officer at the Hanover Township Police Department, effective 12 days from today. My last day at the Hanover Township Police Department will be Monday, October 7th. 
I've accepted a position with another organization closer to my residence with more advancement opportunity and a higher financial future. I've enjoyed working at the Hanover Township Police Department and will miss my colleagues. I would like to thank you and the Hanover Township Police Department for giving me the opportunity to begin my career in law enforcement and I will always be grateful for the knowledge I have learned while my serving as a police officer. Thank you for understanding and I wish you and the members of the Hanover Township Police Department the very best. Respectfully, Edwin Sanchez. May we have a motion to accept that letter of resignation? Motion. Motion by Mr. Cahill. Second. Second by Mr. Mahalko. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the second letter is a letter addressed to me from uh, Nicholas Didow, dear Mr. Giorgio. This letter is to formally give notice that I am resigning from my position at the Hanover Township the Public of, uh, Department of Public Works. I have accepted a new opportunity and my last day of work was October the 4th. I have gained a lot of knowledge and experience by being a part of the team and appreciate all the time, attention, and training I have received over the, over the past four years. I really enjoyed working for the township and with my fellow co-workers. My superiors were very honest and respectful. The Department of Public Works was, likely, was like a big family. It was not my intent to leave this job, but unfortunately, I felt inclined to make this change in order to be properly compensated for my skill set. I need to set, I need to seek outside employment. While I think public works is a great area to get into, there seemed to be a little, there seemed to be little advancement, and new opportunities would arise suddenly where you would have to be in the right place at the right time. I think the department could benefit from a step up, step up program and that a lot of other townships will utilize to incentivize employees for long-term employment. I am fortunate to have been a part of this DPW and wish everyone well. I thank you for giving me the opportunity for work, to work for such a great township. Sincerely, Nicholas Didal. May we have a motion to accept that letter of resignation? So moved. So moved by Mr. Second. Gallagher, <laughs> seconded by Mr. Francioli. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So approved and accepted. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we now turn to item number A, public hearing and adoption of ordinances. There will be certain ordinances that will be taken up separately for reasons that we will get into. But at this time, uh, we will note that ordinance numbers 35-2019, 37-2019, and 38-2019, those three ordinances can be taken at this time as a consent for public hearing. We'll note for the record that the ordinances and the notices of introduction appeared in full in the daily record on September uh, 18, 2019. With respect to ordinance number 38-2019, That ordinance, in accordance with the municipal land use law, was sent to the planning board for referral and recommendation. It was also sent to the Morris County Office of Planning and Preservation, and it was filed in accordance with law. The uh, planning board has filed the following letter with me. Mm. Dear Mr. Giorgio, at its October 8, 2019 mm. meeting, the Planning Board reviewed and discussed Ordinance Number 38-2019, which had been referred to the, board of, by, to the Board by the Township Committee, required by the Municipal Land Use Law at NJSA 40-55D-26A. Ordinance 38 38-2019 proposes to amend Article 20 signs and other sign regulations in Chapter 166 to amend the sign regulations for retail sales and retail service uses. In reviewing Ordinance 38-2019 uh, for consistency mm -hmm. with the Master Plan, the Planning Board has determined that Ordinance 38-2019 is substantially consistent with the Master Plan. The land use element of the Master Plan recommends limiting the number of signs and that signs be coordinated in large scale retail centers. Ordinance 38-2019 promotes these objectives 
and the Planning Board recommends the adoption of Ordinance 38-2019 as introduced. Thank you for the opportunity to comment on Ordinance 38-2019. Very truly yours, Gene Pinadella, on behalf of the Planning Board and as Chair. So, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'm going to entertain a motion that the Township Committee convene public hearings on Ordinance Numbers 35-2019, 37-2019, and 38-2019. We'll be coming back to Ordinance 36 and 39 later. So at this time, may we have a motion to convene the public hearings. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Fermoska. Seconded by Mr. Gallagher. On roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermoska. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. Mr. Cahill. Yes. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Is there anyone in chambers wishing to be heard on Ordinance 35-19, 37-19, or 38-19? Do we have any comments from the public on any of those three ordinances? Motion to close. Second. Second. <clears throat> Motion by Mr. Francioli. Seconded by Mr. Fermosca. On roll call to close the public hearing. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermosca. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. Mr. Cahill. Yes. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Now on adoption that all these three ordinances be adopted on final reading and that passages of the ordinance with notices of adoption be published in the October 16th issue of the Morris County Daily Record in accordance with law. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion for the adoption of ordinances 35-2019, 37-2019, and 38-2019. So moved. That's on adoption Second. by Mr. Fermosca. <laughs> Seconded by Mr. Francioli. On roll call for adoption on the three ordinances. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermosca. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. Mr. Cahill. Yes. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So adopted. Modifications in the sign ordinance, folks, will be a great asset to our retailers on uh, particularly along the, uh, the highway shops. <clears throat> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to have a separate public hearing and we'll explain the reason for that on 36-2019. May we have a motion to convene the public hearing? So moved. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Gallagher. Second. Second by Mr. Francioli. On roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermosca. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. Mr. Cahill. Yes. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. We'll note for the record that Ordinance 36-2019 appeared in full with the notice of introduction in the daily record on the uh, 18th of September. Uh, perhaps Mr. Gallagher wants to mention the reason why we might have a change in this. Yes, after careful analysis of this recommendation and speaking once again to Mr. Wasco, the building principal, engineering and engineering working with our police department, it's no secret for almost six years now we've been working to make our vehicular and pedestrian traffic in and around our schools and parks much safer. There's two models in town that we used that worked. Salem Drive, there's alternating, alternate, uh, alternating side of the street parking at different times of the day. Reynolds Avenue, it's the school side. The entire school side you can park on because you're getting out on the school side and it's much safer than parking on the other side of the street and <laughs> crossing. And at one point there was technically no stopping or standing on either side. Well, after careful evaluation and speaking to a lot of people, the fact that we're taking action was applauded, but if the parking is on the right side of the street, the families have to get out, walk up the street, and still cross. Mm -hmm. It was recommended that if we can make the morning 
drop off and the afternoon pickup on the same side of the street, which is the school side of the street, that would be even better. So after careful evaluation, we talked about it quite a bit, and we said, you know, this is a work in progress, and it wouldn't, it would be a very good thing to evaluate it, because that's one of our four E's, evaluate it, and make the decision now, and, re and defeat this ordinance, reintroduce the new one, and then we'll have that up and running. Uh, and that, again, is consistent with the recommendations of our police, our engineering, and our school system. And as a governing body, it makes a lot of sense to us too, Joe. So I would like to, I'm not sure how you handle it with well, the public hearing. Well, at this hearing. time, we have, we, we need to, uh, as okay. we have the motion, to open okay. a public hearing. So if there's any comment on this ordinance based on what Committee Man Gallagher said, please step to the microphone now, and certainly you can address any comments to members of the Township Committee on this. Seeing none. Hearing none, seeing none, seeing none, may we have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Motion by Mr. Ferramaska, seconded by Mr. Cahill. On roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Ferramaska. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. Mr. Cahill. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Now, as recommended by Mr. Gallagher, there is a uh, recommendation to defeat this ordinance. And at the end of this meeting, we will be introducing a new ordinance to put in place the corrected uh, no stopping, no standing features. We've gone over this with the township attorney today, and that's another reason why, just as an example, sometimes we have last minute changes where we put it on the agenda last minute. <laughs> so at this time, a yes vote will be to defeat. So may we have a motion to defeat Ordinance 36-2019. Move to defeat. We have a motion by Mr. Gallagher. Second. Second by Mr. Ferramaska. On roll call to defeat, a yes vote is to defeat. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Mr. Ferramaska? Yes. Mr. Mahalko? Yes. Mr. Cahill? Yes. And Mr. Francia? Yes. So defeated and withdrawn. Joe, I'd just like to take one second and thank everybody for their hard work on this. And again, the beneficiary beneficiaries are young kids and their families. And everybody put a lot of time into this, so thank you very much, guys. And thank you to our professionals. Good work, guys. <coughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue with the agenda, here again we have a second ordinance for uh, to take up separately on public hearing, and that is docketed as ordinance number 39. So ordinance number 39-2019 also appeared in full with the notice of introduction in the daily record on the 18th of September. In accordance with the municipal land use law, it was referred to the township's planning board for referral and recommendation. It was also forwarded to the Morris County Office of Planning and Preservation, where it was docketed as received. The letter from the, and also all the contiguous municipalities received copies of the ordinance. I have in my possession a letter dated October 8, 2019 from the Planning Board Chair, Gene Pinadella, addressed to me, dear Mr. Giorgio. At its October 8, 2019 meeting, the Planning Board reviewed and discussed ordinance number 39-2019 which had been referred to the board by the Township Committee as required by the Municipal Land Use Law at NJSA 40 colon 55D 26A. Ordinance 39-2019 proposes to amend section 166-114 of the zoning regulations in order to permit and regulate detached garages for residential uses. In reviewing Ordinance 39-2019 for consistency with the Master Plan, the Planning Board has determined that the Master Plan does not make specific recommendations concerning accessory buildings for residential uses. Despite the absence of such recommendations, the Planning Board believes that Ordinance Number 39-2019 is not substantially inconsistent with the master plan 
since such accessory buildings are common features of residential development. However, the Planning Board recommends mm. that Ordinance 39-2019 be withdrawn or defeated as appropriate since the board is considering different standards for accessory buildings and it hopes to recommend such standards for adoption in the near future. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the opportunity to comment on Ordinance 39-2019. Very truly yours, Gene Pinadella, on behalf of the Township Planning Board. So at this time, may we have a motion to convene the public hearing once again, this ordinance appeared in full in the daily record with the notice of introduction on the 18th of September. So moved. We have Second. a motion by Mr. Ferramaska, seconded by Mr. Gallagher. On roll call for public hearing, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Ferramaska. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. Mr. Cahill. Yes. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Is there anyone in chambers wishing to address any comments to the Township Committee concerning Ordinance 39-2019? Hearing none, we, we, uh, was this considered for a modification? Where's Blaze? Are you doing a substantive change to this and, go, and addressing yeah, the R10 the zone? The board is, is asked to have this defeated and they'd like to yes. prepare a revised ordinance for exactly. the government. And prepare, body. Uh, go, move it forward and then go with a revised. Is that what you want to do? Yeah. All, right, uh, all right, go ahead. Okay, that's to close the, the public hearing. Mm -mm. Uh, I'm sorry, to open the public hearing. Is there anyone wishing to be heard concerning <coughs> Ordinance 39-2019? <coughs> hearing none, seeing none, may we have a motion to close the public so hearing. Moved. Motion Second. by Mr. Faramaska, <coughs> seconded by Mr. Gallagher. On roll call to close the public hearing, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. Mr. Cahill. Yes. And Mr. Franciello. Aye. Now, on uh, the recommendation of the Planning Board to defeat May we have a motion to defeat ordinance number 39-2019. So motion by second. Mr. Faramaska, seconded by Mr. Francioli. And a yes vote would be to defeat. On roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Yes. Mr. Faramaska. Yes, and I'd like to thank the member of the public who worked with the planning board to bring out some issues for the planning board to evaluate and assess. Uh, and based upon that learning, the planning board decided to work with um, it's it's planner to optimize that ordinance um, so we do not implement something that is less than optimal uh, to deal with this important issue. Thank you. It's a good comment. The gentleman lived in an R10 zone and understands the constriction so he brought some interesting facts to us. Very Mr. good. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. Mr. Cahill. Yes. Mr. Fer uh, Francioli. Aye. So defeated. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now as we continue with uh, the next portion of business as consent agenda, introduction of ordinances. And again, we're doing this piecemeal again because uh, Mr. Rusmi so will be giving certain comments on all those ordinances pertaining to our uh, certification of compliance with the court. And what we're going to do is take ordinance number 40-2019 and 41-2019 uh, as a consent agenda upon introduction. Both these ordinances will be considered for public hearing and final passage at the Township Committee meeting on November the 18th. I'm sorry, November the 14th. November the 14th at 8 p.m. And at that time, any person wishing to be heard concerning the ordinances will be given the opportunity to be heard. The ordinances and the notice of introduction for both will appear in full in the daily record in accordance with law. So on <coughs> introduction for ordinance numbers 40 and 41, may we have a motion for introduction. So moved. So moved by Mr. Gallagher. Second. Second by Mr. Francioli on roll call for introduction of <coughs> ordinance 40 and 41 
as they appear on your agenda. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. Mr. Cahill. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So introduced. Now, ladies and gentlemen, ordinances 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. We're all in the planning stages and preparation stages during the last week, and they have been prepared in order to be in compliance with the judgment of compliance before Judge Gauss in Sussex County Superior Court and in order to give everyone an opportunity to understand what these ordinances are all about, we're going to ask Mr. Rasmussen, our associate attorney, to give an introduction on each of these ordinances before we introduce. Uh, I'm just going to do a, a very quick read-through or run-through uh, of what uh, kind of an overview of each of these ordinances is. Uh, and to save time, I'm only going to refer to them by number. Uh, I'm not going to read them by title, but I think what this will do is it will basically uh, allow anybody who's, who's interested to know uh, what the idea of each particular ordinance is, and then when they're available for the public to read, you can take a look into them a little bit further, and there's going to be a full hearing on every one of these ordinances at the November 14th meeting of the township, and there we'll have a chance to discuss everything again. I'm, I'm just introducing these ordinances, I'm giving an idea of what they do, but we're not going to be actually answering questions about the ordinances tonight that will take place on November 14th. So, uh, first, ordinance number 42-, oh, all these ordinances, by the way, uh, are essentially ordinances 42-2019 through ordinance 50-2019. These ordinances are all essentially the townships uh, effectuating the, uh, the settlement agreement it has with uh, the state on fair share housing. Uh, so these all have to do with the township's uh, obligation under fair share housing. I think most people are aware of the, uh, the developments that will be uh, being uh, moved forward in the township as a result of the settlement uh, at the River Park site uh, and at the Pine Plaza site. Basically, this is all legislation that enables that to happen. So, uh, ordinance number 42-2019 this actually relates to a discussion that took place in the last meeting. Um, the River Park development, uh, the developer is going to be entering into uh, a pay payment in lieu of taxes agreement with the township. Uh, and what this ordinance does, uh, actually not only for this payment in lieu of taxes agreement, but for every payment in lieu of taxes agreement moving forward, is it allocates the funding uh, automatically that the township, the revenue that the township receives as a result of uh, these uh, payment in lieu of taxes uh, agreements. Uh, so basically, I, I think there was some concern in the township about uh, certain entities not receiving their fair share uh, of uh, the revenues the township would take in under uh, uh, payment in lieu of taxes or pilot agreement. Um, and what this ordinance essentially does is it mandates that Revenues coming in in a pilot agreement must be distributed as such. 35% of the revenues go to the township, 37% of the revenues go to the Board of Education, 19% of the revenues go to the regional school, 4% go to the fire district, and 5% go, go to Morris County. There's actually a good Q&A uh, on the township's website right now about how the pilot program with River Park in particular will work, but basically, this ensures that the schools, the fire district, uh, those types of entities get the kind of uh, revenue uh, under the pilot agreement that they get under uh, revenue collected uh, pursuant to normal property taxes being paid. That's uh, what 40, Ordinance 42-19 does. Uh, ordinance 43-19, basically what this does, and Terry, I'll touch on your uh, question here, even though we're not doing questions and answers, uh, but 4319 creates what is called an AH2 overlay zone. So this specific overlay zone is going to go over block uh, 8503, lots 3, 4, and 7 in the township. What that means is the zoning that's already in place for those lots is still in place. So if, if you owned one of those properties and you wanted to continue your, your use of those properties, as you were using it previously, that zoning is still in place. This specific overlay zone 
AH2, it permits the developing of housing uh, uh, essentially for uh, age, age restricted affordable units uh, at a higher density. So basically, uh, under this overlay zone, you can develop these properties with up to 11 units per acre uh, with a 20% uh, affordable housing set aside. That means 20% of the units that are to be developed will have age restricted housing set aside uh, and that will be for age 66 and up. So that's what that specific overlay zone is. Um, and the properties are along Parsippany Road. Um, so again, that's block 8503, lots 3, 4, and 7. Um, ordinance 44-2019, basically this concerns the AH3 overlay zone that was referred to by Terry. This will be put into place in the township uh, at block 8305, lot 6, lot 7.01, and lot 8. What this, this is an overlay zone similar to the one that I just mentioned, basically meaning that if you own one of those properties, whatever zoning is in, there, in place there right now, uh, you can continue that use for those properties. This permits the additional use in this particular case, in the case of the AH3 affordable uh, housing overlay district, of uh, units at a density of 11 units per acre uh, with also a 20% affordable housing set aside. So say you develop, you know, uh, five units, you've got to set aside one of those units as affordable housing, but in this case, uh, it's not age restricted. So for these, these lots, basically the overlay zone mandates that if you develop the lots, you've got to set aside that affordable housing quota, but for non-age restricted units. Um, ordinance 45-2019, what this ordinance does is it rezones a section of Airport Road uh, basically from what's called currently the OS zone and creates the RM6 zone. Uh, so this is a section of Airport Road and it basically, the overlay zone, or this is a rezoning, so this actually changes the zoning. It's going to permit the development of multifamily rental units, uh, including 40, 42 affordable rental units uh, with a density of 11 units per acre. That again is Ordinance 45-19. Um, ordinance 46-2019, what this ordinance does, uh, it basically takes one specific lot in the township, Block 4301, Lot 2.01. This is uh, the Our Lady of Mercy site. This permits this half, half acre, this is just a rezoning of a half, half acre lot in the township and it permits the development uh, of a group home on that lot that previously was not a permitted use for that lot. So again, that is 46-2019. Ordinance 47-2019, let's see here. So uh, I think people are aware of the fact that uh, Hanover Township uh, found itself in a situation where uh, it had to uh, settle with the fair share with fair share housing in New Jersey, uh, and it had a pretty high obligation uh, of affordable units that had to be developed. It ended up setting, settling at a much lower number for that obligation, uh, and so it was kind of able to get itself out of a bind uh, this time around. But you never know what will be the case in the next round uh, because this is something that's controlled by the courts. And what this ordinance does, Ordinance 47-2019, is it basically mandates that moving forward, whenever there are developments in the township of more than a certain amount of units, they already, like even before we're talking about the next round of affordable housing, they already have to have a set aside built in. So if you, it, it uh, affects developments of more than five units. So pursuant to this ordinance, if you were to develop, to develop a, a housing complex that had say six or seven units or something like that or more, you'd have to have a set aside. The set aside is 20% of units have to be affordable units. What that also hopefully will do is will put the township in a much better position moving forward so things happen more gradually and it's not facing uh, a situation where it has to develop so much affordable housing at once. That's 47-2019. Ordinance 48-2019, basically what this ordinance does 
any, any developer who's permitted to develop in the township as a result of these agreements that the township had to enter into with the court, those developers have to pay a fee to the township. They don't get to develop those sites for free. And this ordinance makes sure that moving forward, the fee that these developers pay, just as a right to develop these properties pursuant to these agreements, it's going to be 2.5% of the equalized assess assessed value of the properties that they're developing. So the township actually gets uh, a decent amount of revenue uh, from these developers being permitted to develop these properties. That's Ordinance 48-2019. Ordinance 49-2019, uh, this is pretty simple. It basically just mandates that the township has to keep all of its affordable units in compliance with fair share housing. It's a pretty common sense ordinance because obviously we want to stay in compliance so that we can protect our settlement agreement, which is a pretty good agreement and not get into trouble with the courts. That was pretty simple. And then lastly, Ordinance 50-2019. This is basically just an ordinance that effectuates, uh, that enables the zoning changes provided uh, in Ordinances 43-2019 through 46-2019. So that's essentially what these ordinances will do. Uh, the full text of these ordinances is going, is going to be uh, released by the by the township when we, we have the full text and when they're or once they've been introduced, uh, and then on November fourteenth we're going to have a full hearing on all these ordinances. Thank you, Rob. Very. Uh, I'll do one other thing, if you would, uh, for the benefit of the public. Uh, explain how the uh, overlay zone benefited us in our final uh, agreement of uh, units that we're putting in town. Well, you, by uh, agreeing to, uh, and I, I don't have the exact numbers offhand, yeah. but, uh, but I'll just say by, and this is not just the overlay zone itself, but uh, by the approach that the township, the township took a number of creative approaches when we were negotiating with the court, our fair share agreement, uh, and I, I wish I had the number offhand because it's a breathtaking number, but uh, uh, well, you, you, using, took, you took 950 down to 550. Yeah, all right, th thank you, Mayor. Uh, so basically, the township's obligation, the original obligation of affordable units that the township had to uh, build as a result of uh, the, the fair share housing laws uh, was 950 units. Uh, it, we, we got it down in our settlement to 550 units. The overlay zones were certainly a part of the courts. The court, I think, is just generally very pleased with the way we've handled this. We took a lot of creative approaches uh, to kind of uh, kind of get into the court's good graces and uh, and uh, lift some of the uh, the hammer that you see coming down a lot of other municipalities around here. Thank you, <clears throat> Joseph. <clears throat> okay, uh, thank you, Rob. Appreciate you, the, the summary. So at this time, ladies and gentlemen, on introduction for ordinance numbers 42-2019 through ordinance number 50-2019. All these ordinances with their respective notices of introduction will appear in full in the Morris County Daily Record in accordance with law. The public hearing on all of these ordinances will take place, as Rob pointed out, on the 14th of November at 8 p.m. here in the main meeting room. And at that time, any person wishing to be heard and enter into the record any comments on any of those ordinances, 40, 42 through 50, will be given the opportunity to speak. So at this time, may we have a motion to introduce ordinance numbers 42-2019 through 50-2019. I'll move to introduce the, um, the group of ordinances uh, with the recognition that's due to the planning board. Mr. Branchow, Burgess Associates, Phillips Associates, um, our attorneys um, who work diligently. This is a significant body of work um, that's being presented to you tonight. It, it looks pretty... Uh, simple at this point in, in it, but this is a significant body of work, a major undertaking um, that is a result, let us remember, of a court-ordered settlement is to satisfy a mandate of the court. And that mandate of the court approximately was 950 affordable units, and Hanover Township was successful in reducing that by over 40% to get it down to a much more manageable number of approximately 550. 
So I, I thank all of the professionals and the planning board and the attorneys who work diligently um, to move this forward and to keep this on schedule because failure to keep it on schedule uh, would have resulted in additional uh, challenges for our township. Mm -hmm. We have a motion by Mr. Ferramosca. Do we have a second? Second. By Mr. Gallagher on roll call for introduction on the motion by Mr. Ferramosca and Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Gallagher. Mr. Ferramosca. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. Mr. Cahill. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as Mr. Gallagher, as Committeeman Gallagher um, reported with respect to ordinance number 36, dealing with uh, Mount View Road, we have a new ordinance now docketed as ordinance number 51-2019, will, which will provide for the no stopping, no standing restrictions on the west side of Mount View Road, which eliminates the need for any children to cross the street uh, and get in harm's way. So at this time, Ordinance number 51-2019 and the Notice of Introduction will appear in full in the Mars County Daily Record in accordance with law, the public hearing, and consideration of final passage will take place on November 14th at 8 p.m. here in the main meeting room. And once again, any member of the public will be given the opportunity to speak concerning Ordinance 51-2019. And that ordinance, again, is an ordinance which supplements our traffic regulations uh, entitled Vehicles in Traffic with the inclusion of parking restrictions on the west side of Mount View Road. So with that being said, may we have a motion for introduction? So moved. So moved by Mr. Gallagher. Second. Second by Mr. Cahill. On roll call for introduction, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Ferramosca. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. Mr. Cahill. Yes. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Joe, if I could just sure. make one more comment about why this is so important. If, if you were to park on the right side and the left side in the morning or in the afternoon, when the families open their car doors into the street, you can only get one car at most going up and down that street. Yeah, yeah closes the lane. So you have a, a car on the right, a car on the left, a car going in, a car coming out, and then it was brought to our attention, what if, God forbid, you need to get an emergency vehicle on there? So by eliminating one side and having that opened at all times, there's many, many benefits. So I want to thank everybody for working so hard on this, and it's going to make it better for all of our families. Thank you, guys. Good approach. And thanks to the professionals. Very good approach. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, on page five, we continue with the resolutions as a consent agenda. We have items A through H. Are there any comments or questions from members of the governing body concerning any of the resolutions which are listed? I'd like to make a comment about uh, B and C. Sure. That's in reference to two new members coming on to our Recreation Commission. Uh, I'd like to welcome them. They, oh. We had several applicants, and uh, they were all very well qualified, and it was nice to see some interest. And uh, really, again, just looking forward to having Tanya and, uh, and CJ come out and uh, be alternates on our, uh, on our team. It would be good to have them. Looking forward to Great. Having them. That fills you out. Yes. Good. Yeah, these are two alternate positions. Very good. Any other comments or questions? Motion to accept. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Francioli on the consent agenda for the approval of the resolutions. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Gallagher. On roll call for approval of the resolutions as a consent agenda. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Ferramosca. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. Mr. Cahill. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So approved. We go now to page, uh, the bottom of page six, the payment of bills, $4,922,368.89. May we have a motion to pay our bills? Motion. motion by Mr. Cahill. Second. Second by Mr. Mahalko. On roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Ferramosca. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Yes. Mr. Cahill. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. We pay our bills. That's a good idea. Raffle applications as a consent agenda. 
And are there any comments concerning the raffle applications? Motion that they be approved. We have a motion seconded. by Mr. Ferromaska, seconded by Mr. Gallagher on the approval of the raffle applications as a consent agenda. On roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Ferromaska. Aye. Mr. Mahalko. Aye. Mr. Cahill. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So approved. Mr. Chairman, members of the Township Committee, that clears the agenda of the Business Administrator, Township Clerk, and I thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Appreciate it. Very good. Uh, gentlemen, once again, I'd like to open this portion of the meeting uh, to the public. Motion to open. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, again, the floor is open. Uh, please giving us your name and address for the record. Can I make a comment from here? I just want uh, one of the people we promoted was in the audience today. I just want to congratulate her. Yeah. She's oh, very good. up to the uh, assistant. Well deserved. Congrats. Very good. Floor remains open. Douglas Seaman, 48 Washington Ave. I was hoping if you could help me better understand the actual settle agreement. Does the uh, actual agreement stipulate that the developments be full pilot? Could you elaborate on what you mean by full pilot? The excluding commercial, the uh, market and uh, affordable housing units as part of it. So there was some talk in the August meeting that the River Park would be uh, excluding commercial um, pilot. Then last meeting was kind of up in the air whether the whole thing would. I read the FAQs on it. it, seems to go back to being full pilot. So the question is on the residential piece, does the actual settlement agreement with the court mandate that any of those developments be pilot? River Park must have a pilot agreement, yes. For the whole development, for the, for the whole development the excluding commercial? For the residential portion of the property. Okay, market and affordable? Uh, yes. Okay. Appreciate that. Um, I know no question and answers um, on the ordinances for tonight, but uh, go back to uh, some comments and questions I had at the last meeting as far as what analysis has been conducted so far for financial pro formas. The FAQs would lead one to believe that there has been some analysis conducted. Uh, there are certain comments in there to the effect of uh, we project that, we see revenues at least equal, and another term, result in significant additional cost savings. Using terms similar to those would lead one to believe that there has been financial analysis conducted. The cost savings that you're referring to, those are kind of two different parts of the agreement. The cost savings you're referring to uh, relate to the fact that as a result of this agreement, uh, concerning the River Park development, the township is going to be relieved uh, of providing a lot of the services that it provides to other property owners in the township. Uh, and then, uh, what was the first part of your question again, if you wouldn't mind repeating it? Yeah, it, it, the basis of the question is, has there been any financial analysis done? And that, when you read the answer to the last question, it would lead you to believe that analysis has been done at the last meeting and indicated that there wasn't, it would come at a later stage. So I'm just wondering if anything had transpired since the last meeting. We have not done any formal financial analysis uh, of the revenue that will be coming in yet, no. Okay. I think it would be unfair then to use terms that we project and see revenues at least equal to without some analysis to support that. Well, the pilot agreement sets out a, a formula uh, for how much revenue is going to be completed. So basically, if you have a calculator and you look at an idea of what kind of rents they're going to be, you can get an idea of what kind of revenues will be coming in. We don't have any kind of formal analysis that's been done where we'll be able to provide a good projection of the township of say in year two or year five, what revenues are going to be coming in. That hasn't been done yet, but we do know what roughly what the formula would be. And so if you have a calculator and you do a rough analysis, you can get an idea of what kind of revenues would be coming in. Okay. 
So you've discussed amongst yourselves what those revenues would appear to be. We have, but you're yes. not. Are you in a position to share with the public? Uh, there, there is no. There's been no formal analysis, and we would not be comfortable sharing any numbers until that has taken place. Okay. Um, as far as the um, my main last meeting was around education. Um, Looking back at some notes, uh, came across the Rucker study, which was referenced by the developer for corporate mailings as far as how many students. Uh, I guess, question for our town planner, uh, Mr. Branchot. Uh, using the Rucker study, do you know how many students you would project would come in from the proposed developments? I believe there's five proposed developments, including the airport road development. In the Rutgers study? Rutgers study. I don't, I don't have those numbers to make that calculation. Okay. Do you have a range available from, I know at last meeting, I think you had noted that there's several different studies that you could use if you have a range. Uh, there, there has been, uh, subsequent to the Rutgers study, there has been a study that was released limited solely to rental housing. Uh, which came out with numbers lower than the Rutgers study. Uh, we've also done two different studies in Hanover Township to see what number of school kids are coming out of the existing developments that we have. The most recent one, as I indicated previously, gave a ratio of 0.13 school children per unit. Um, and we would anticipate the number to be similar but possibly lower than that uh, partly because most of what we have now are condo ownership units whereas a substantial uh, number of the proposed units will be rental units uh, which we believe will have a lower number of school children than the existing units in town uh, in addition some of these units that we're proposing will be senior units uh, without children at all um, and in addition uh, some of the units will be in mixed-use developments with a combination of retail and housing uh, and we believe that those situations are less likely to have uh, as many children school children as what we have today are largely full housing condo development. So we don't, obviously, all of these are projections. Rutgers is a projection. Uh, my experience with the Rutgers numbers is that sometimes they're accurate, sometimes they're high, sometimes they're low. They're, they're averages. They're somewhat dated at this point in time. Uh, but we use multiple sources. And so that's about all I can tell you, though. As far as using the Rutgers study, I'd have to pull that study and plug the numbers in and see what they come out with, but I haven't done that. Okay. But just absent of, I'm sure that your little timer up there was to remind you that I'm maybe past my four minutes. The, um, I, when there's lack of information, I think that maybe frightens the public right there's some apprehension when there's lack of information on what's being shared especially when it comes to education I would say as a parent there's nothing more you care about than your child and their well-being and their upbringing and the education that they receive and when there is lack of information on potential impact to schools uh, was happy to see allocation of 56 percent but really can't comment on that without more financial details but personally I went through calculated on the Rutgers study I don't have the plans because Rutgers study does base it off of one to three stories versus four to seven uh, how close it is to transportation stops but for the five proposed developments using the Rutgers study assuming they're all low rise uh, and not getting into all the nitty-gritty but it's over 450 students it's a big number. And I understand if you take the point one three that the town has uh, for its existing units, it does come out to be a much lower number, uh, under 200, I believe. But again, absent of information, 
someone if they take the time, uh, as I did myself, to go in and you see a number that's over 450 students, that's a huge impact to our school system. Huge. It's not, eh, maybe a class can absorb it. 450 students, you're talking building an entire new school or impacting class size. Right? So I, I bring that up. I bring it back to what analysis has been done uh, because number of students, school age kids coming in from these developments will ultimately have an impact on our town's ability to maintain the same tax rates uh, increases. You have done a great job. Uh, commended you at the last meeting uh, for that. So I'm just hoping that we don't get too far along in this process and have to realize, well, wait a second, there's more coming in than what we expected. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Floor remains open. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but Terry Baird, when he precipitated me, wrote Whippany section of Hanover. Um, a Rob kind of piqued my interest in getting my calculator out. So is there the apartments that are at River Park, do they have like a, like a term that I could Google to try to find like how much people get for rents? Like are they considered, I don't know, luxury or I don't know so that I can plug in some numbers to get my you know I can try to figure it out uh, Terry I don't think we have the numbers on what the rents will be at River Park yet, which I think is, is what your question is yeah so I'm trying to figure out you know if I get my calculator out what I can what kind of numbers like where do you suggest that I find rental numbers for that I could plug in that I could try to figure it out myself we, we just don't have that information at this point yeah. we, know what present, we know Terry what present rentals are huh? in the town Okay, so. Yeah, I mean, if you just go to Zillow, put in Hanover Township, put in Marstown, it'll be. Yeah, I could just see what my neighbor wants to get for his. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Once again, the floor remains open. Motion to close. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Gentlemen, at this point, motion to adjourn. No, Comedian Gallagher. Oh, <coughs> what you want some oh, okay. <laughs> Ready, run. Okay, uh, first of all, I want to talk about a pretty serious issue that the Township Committee has been working very closely with our arborist and our DPW is the Emerald Dashboard. And the Township has been very aggressive in removing these hazardous trees in our most highly populated areas and our major throughways. But we have a lot more work to do. But we are going to be putting together with our arborist a public service announcement because I'm in that industry and the ash trees are starting to die rapidly and they're becoming dry and weak and it is a real hazard. And we have a lot of them in Hanover Township and we have a lot of them in this section in New Jersey. So it's going to be tricky because now all the trees are lo losing their leaves. So you're not going to be able to tell a tree is compromised probably until the spring if you haven't already. And by then, the trees can be a real hazard. So I would Google ash trees in this region in New Jersey and just become a little bit familiar with what they look like and what they are and what the telltale signs are that they have the uh, bore. And we will be um, releasing information uh, to be as helpful as we can to help you get rid of them. We can't get involved with you hiring a contractor, but what we can recommend is if you do hire one, Hire, make sure they're licensed by the state, make sure they're fully insured. And in this industry, another great way to get a good company is to ask your friends who they've used and if they like them. And also at that point, they grow in clusters. You can also probably get together with a few neighbors at once and book out a certain amount of time and save a lot of money. Mm. But we can't do that, but we, we're gonna put together quite a recommendation using our arborist, our engineering, our DPW. So we're gonna be working on that for a little while because come springtime, it's gonna be a, a, a big thing with everybody wanting to get rid of them and noticing there's a lot of dead, there's a lot of broken material all over the property. Yeah, there is. So that's a pretty serious note. Yeah. To segue into leaves and our DPW, you're gonna to start to see the guys out seven days a week with their, uh, their vacs. But with that brings piles of leaves in the street, makes the streets more narrow, and it makes it much more of a hazard. 
So, and it gets dark early. So when, please be careful, allow for extra time. And we've all played in the leaves on the side of the street when we were kids. Um, it's gonna get dark, it's gonna be a lot of leaves, and, it, and it's gonna be more hazardous. So we're probably gonna put something about that out too. To, uh, Wouldn't be a bad idea. Help our families in that area. Uh, talking about tree maintenance and removal. Uh, this entire body will be at East Hanover Central School October 19th for the One Day, One School Beautification and Safety Initiative. We're going to be dealing with a lot of beautification, a lot of, a lot of hazardous removals, hazardous pruning. We're going to have a big lunch. And we're also putting together two out of our three K-5s through cleanup programs at our schools. So we're going to be busy for the next couple of weeks. And if anybody wants to get involved, uh, we'd love to have you on, mm -hmm. on any level. And um, believe it or not, this body actually works, not just <laughs> works around and has a good time making sure to get two t-shirts to bring not home Not just a lot of one. pretty faces. <laughs> uh, what we're doing too is a, a great, great karate school in Hanover Township is going to be working with Hanover Township PD and the Drug Coalition with the uh, Empower Group at Whippany Park High School for self-defense and situational awareness. It's a great program. We're looking to grow it with REC to where it's going to be geared towards children going away to college or moving out of their homes for the first time and almost giving them a little bit of street smarts with a couple self-defense moves to get them further prepared. God forbid they get in a compromising situation. We've done it before and uh, Chief Roddy usually opens it up mm -hmm. and it, it's pretty good because these, these, and I have one too, I can say it a couple of us do, these little girls that think they know everything, all of a sudden they're paying attention and they're a little scared, so it's good. Fear's a good thing sometimes when it's coming from a good place yeah. and it's a, le a learning lesson. Uh, there's a gentleman in Hanover Township that plays the guitar that everybody knows and loves, Joe Bellotti. Joe's a great guy, great musician. He's gonna be doing a guitar master class at Whippany Park High School Thursday, um, November 14th, it's free. And this is also part of the Drug Coalition working in hand in hand with our schools, our police department, because we're more and more working to recognize our children that are into music and arts. Uh, we're interested in what they play, how they play it, what they paint, what they draw. We're interested, a lot of people are. So it's a great opportunity for that youngster that might have a guitar, strum a few chords and think nobody cares. Well, guess what, we do. And Joe Bellotti's great. He's a professor at County College of Morris right now te that teaches piano. And he's going to come in and also talk about a lot of career options for a musician on different ways that they might not have thought of how they can make a, a comfortable living doing what they love. Mm. Um, the last one, guys, Men in Arena. Friday nights at Men in Arena is going to begin on January 3rd. And at our next meeting, we can officially announce that we're also going to be introducing Friday nights at Aspen Ice in Randolph. And that's going to be 20 consecutive, 20 events in 10 weeks. Because West Jersey, they're part of our drug coalition, explained it's hard to get to Menon. There's no shortcut to Menon. Would we consider Aspen Ice? So we've been talking to Aspen Ice. So West Jersey is going to have 10 consecutive Friday nights at Aspen Ice. We're all going to be at Men in Arena, and Committee Mahalko, who still bites off a little more than he can chew, said, let me know, I'll go up there and help out Aspen Ice. I said, you may, we'll all be at Men in Arena. But uh, we have a lot going on, and uh, thank you for your time, and just be careful out there. It's going to get dark soon, and we got a lot of our youngsters out there having a good time. That's it, Ron. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Dave. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Uh, okay, I just want to piggyback something real quickly. Um, Hank brought up this issue of uh, ash borers in these trees. It's a very dangerous situation when these trees uh, become uh, uh, to, to a point where boughs begin to, to fall. Uh, there are opportunities for some families. I know our uh, JCPNL and, uh, has been out there uh, assessing some trees that they'd like to do uh, some pruning on, some branches on, etc. But we need the cooperation of the families that that would let us let them do it. Um, so uh, I just remind you that if you have a, such trees and power lines are involved and you're contacted by JCPNL, uh, be very wise of you to let them do the work uh, and uh, be out of the liability that's involved there. Having said that, Commander um, Cahill. Hey, thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, so I'd like to start with, uh, I'll start with the Hanover Township uh, Police, uh, one of the many programs that they're involved in. Over the uh, uh, 
course of the Labor Day weekend and, the, and a couple of weeks before, actually starting August 16th and through September 3rd, uh, they participated in a program called Drive Sober or Get pull, Pulled Over. Um, it's basically 110 police departments uh, shared about almost, well, more than half a million dollars in funding for extra patrols, overtime, whatever it took. Uh, and again, Hanover Township typically, um, you know, is very successful in, in participating in these sorts of programs. Uh, so here are some quick stats. Uh, during the, that course uh, related to this program, there are 158 summonses, seven uh, CDS arrests, or Controlled and Dangerous Substance Arrests, two warrant arrests, and one DWI. Um, and my observation there, we were talking about it earlier in the work session around something else, is I think, you know, it kind of shows that these programs are working because it's building awareness. And people really, today, compared to 20 years ago, think before they get behind the wheel and, and really consider, hey, have they had too much to drink or not? Uh, so hopefully that's that's the reason for the only one DWI. Um, and if that's the case, that's good news. Uh, just to circle back, uh, this past Saturday, Hanover Township PBA Local 128 had their seafood truck brew fest. Uh, really successful event. They certainly made a deal with the devil for the weather. What an awesome day. That was. Um, I just, I, I, I took a quick uh, front page read of the Hanover Eagle. Uh, which claims there are 1,300 uh, participants. I believe it. Over the course of the day, it was packed. Uh, if you look at the uh, homepage of the, of the Hanover Township PBA Local 128, uh, they are saying, if you think that's great, just wait till next year. So I can't <laughs> wait until next year because it was a, a really a, a fun time. Um, moving on to HSA, on Monday, September 30th, we held, uh, I, was, I uh, participated in uh, their preliminary budget meeting. Uh, you know, one of the bigger challenges for them, of course, is, uh, you know, I mentioned this a, a couple of months ago, the uh, New Jersey uh, Department of Environmental Protection is changing regulations that's going to require HS HSA to invest in and, and modify their water treatment facilities to some extent to meet any new requirements. Uh, but at least based on, on the preliminary uh, uh, budget, it looks like they're pretty much going to be able to keep costs to the public to uh, to the bare minimum. So uh, more to report on that as they finalize the budget. We'll talk about that, but they're doing a fantastic job. Uh, last group I want to talk about is the Landmark Commission. They are hosting on November 9th a small a, a event um, at the Whippany Bearing Yard. Um, it's a Veterans Day um, celebration or, or ceremony, I should say, uh, starting at 10 a.m. Uh, there will be a brief ceremony. Uh, but then followed by a tour, which they do every time they hold an event at the Bearing Yard. Um, and it's usually very good and very informative. So that is, again, November 9th, which is a Saturday, 10 a.m. to noon. And I just wanted to share with the committee and everybody else, uh, during last month's meeting, the discussions are starting to, um, um, to become centered around the 300th anniversary of Hanover Township, mm. which is going to be next uh, December. I forget the exact day, the day of the month, but it, it's coming up faster than... Uh, uh, you know, than you'd think. Um, so they're having discussions now as to what sort of events they want to uh, uh, do or participate in or that sort of thing. Uh, and they're looking to the township, to us, uh, to start thinking about that ourselves, uh, you know, because this is going to be a big deal. And um, so expect that I'll be putting that on uh, our workshop agenda moving forward in the coming months as I get more ideas from uh, the landmark uh, to bring to your attention. Uh, lastly, around that, one of the things that was discussed, and I thought it was a great idea, is we had a, uh, had a tremendous couple of Hanover Township days. Oh, yeah. And uh, wouldn't it be great if we, if we took that Hanover Township day and just made, themed the entire day uh, a celebration of our 300th uh, birthday? You know, not sure what that would look like, but uh, most of the, uh, the committee uh, thought that great. was a fantastic idea. Slide. So expect we might see something along those lines. Very good. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so uh, uh, great discussion, and like I said, uh, you'll hear more as, as we continue having more meetings around this. And that's it. Very good. That's a great idea. Yeah, Are they so. pursuing that? Is, is, is the recreation going to think about that? Uh, it's first I heard it's a great idea. We'll, we'll pass it down the line. Yeah, we we, we thought idea. about it at that last month's meeting, and, and that's yeah. about you know, as far as we've got. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring it up at the meeting and, uh, yeah. and let them know. That's Michael, you got the floor. Um, start with the seniors. We had a real nice meeting the first and third uh, Wednesdays of every month. We get together, and uh, the senior meeting this month had a um, Every, every the first meeting of the month, they always have some type of speaker or someone come in. This time, they actually had a, uh, a religious service, non-denominational, and uh, it was very nice. Um, I can't emphasize enough, if you're of age, come out. Uh, it's a very active group. There's a lot of things going on. 
too much for me to list. I'll get shot if I go through everything. Uh, but check out their website. There's always stuff going on. And again, twice a month they come out on, on Wednesdays, uh, first and third Wednesday of the month. Come on out. Um, next, vets. I don't know, Ron, is it too early to start talking about the cannon being moved? They're talking about moving the cannon from the VFW over to Vets Field. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're preliminarily looking at it. They've got some pretty good ideas. There's a lot of uh, work that needs to go on. Uh, but I think it'd be pretty, pretty exciting and a nice amenity to have over at Vets Field. Um, as most of us know. Did they meet with you already? Uh, I've just been speaking with Mr. Coppola about it. Oh, all right. Because um, I know you, I know you invited them in to make a presentation. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we've, we've been speaking. They're going to give us an official presentation at our next meeting. Good. Um, at the recreation meeting. Um, speaking of the recreation meeting, getting to rec, our meeting has been changed. Uh, normally it's the third Tuesday, but we had to push it back to actually the fifth Tuesday this month uh, due to some scheduling conflicts. So if anybody's coming out, uh, it'll be October 29th, 7.30, over at the rec center we have our recreation meeting. A um, few things going on at rec. First coming up, Masquerade at Malapartis Park. It's going to be Saturday, October 26th, uh, 2 to 4 o'clock for all the youngsters, all the elementary kids. Um, if you haven't been there or if you have younger kids that haven't, haven't gone yet, uh, there are little booths and they go from booth to booth, little house setups. Uh, and the groups from town, the Rotary, the Knights of Columbus, the fire departments all give out candy. Uh, it's a great time to get to see the kids all dressed up. Uh, there's always always fun stuff going on. Denise uh, Denise Brennan and the rec crew always put some stuff uh, fun stuff going on. Uh, it does go on rain or shine. If it does rain, it will be moved over to uh, Memorial School. So don't think it's canceled. We just move it over to the school. And to be honest, we did that last year. I think it kind of even worked out better because um, <laughs> it was it was a wet sloppy day, but the school was very nice. And, and it, again, it worked out well. There's usually some type of pumpkin pumpkin. Uh, colorings and all kinds of stuff that goes on. Uh, come on out. Again, elementary kids and, and younger, little kids too. Um, so that's Masquerade. Next after that, we have, and again, that was October 26th. There's, um, back up a little bit, Atlantic City trip is on 1020, um, October 20th, $25. I think there's only one or two seats left. So if you're interested, reach out to the rec department right away. Uh, it's an AC trip down and back uh, on the 20th. Paper Mill Playhouse, <coughs> Roger and Hammerstein Cinderella. Um, it's Wednesday, December 11th, 4 o'clock, is the, uh, and they go from the Playhouse uh, to uh, Charlie Brown's afterwards for dinner. Uh, check that out. That's selling quick, too. If there's, if there's still tickets left, check out the, the uh, website, uh, Call Recreation Department. Um, next, something new our first time trying it we're going to have a pat sages memorial basketball tournament um he was one of the one of our recreation members uh, been there for a long time he had done a great job unfortunately he passed away last year uh so in celebration we're going to raise some money and uh set up a fun there's going to be a basketball tournament a three-on-three -three tournament it's on november 9th uh going all day 9 a.m till about six o'clock at night uh, check out the website to register. Um, get a group together. Even if you don't want to play, uh, you can still certainly register and come out and support. Uh, it'll be a fun day. It'll be a fun day to support uh, Pat and, and all that he's done for us. Um, I know it seems early, but mark your calendars. Santa Claus is coming to town already. Oh, boy. Uh, December 7th, Saturday, December 7th, 2 to 4 o'clock at the rec center. So, again, mark your calendars. Um, and then finally, I just again want to reiterate, I want to thank and look forward to working with Tanya Tasso and CJ Engelberger, our two new rec uh, alternates that are going to be jumping in. Um, really looking forward to them, some, uh, some young ideas, some young blood coming in, and uh, looking forward to having two new members on. Great, great. We're good. All right. <laughs> never, never lets, the recreation never lets us down, I'll tell you. Uh, Deputy Mayor, what we got happening? Been a, been a busy season repairing roads. Over $1 million has been spent. Uh, significant investment in our community. We need it. Six are done. One major one to go, Ridgedale Avenue, from Horse Hill to Hanover. It's now underway. And we are pressuring uh, the utility companies. The utility companies 
did a lot of work on McNabb, and they left McNabb in a very poor state. Our engineering is working with um, the water company and PSE&G um, to make sure that that road gets repaid before what we say the snow flies. So it's got to get done. We recognize that. It's important. Um, speaking about roads, it's also important, as you see, we have 77 miles of roads in Hanover Township. We can't repave them all uh, because it's your money, and we can't spend your money like that. But if you see a pothole, please, on the website, report it, especially as winter's coming. It's really easy, and we use that information, and we knock them down pretty efficiently. Also, it's been spoken about Halloween is right around the corner. As you're out driving about, street light outages, especially the safety of trick-or-treaters. You got little ones walking around on these roads. It's dark out, and if those street lights are out, it just increases the level of danger. So if you see a street light out, report that on the website as well. Environmental Commission was here tonight. Dennis Fischano did a great job updating on a teat the uh, Township Committee on Green Initiatives. They do a terrific job. Reminder, Dennis spoke about it. Free Paper Shred Day is November 2nd at the Rec Center from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock. It's for our residents, it's for our employees only, um, and there's no limit, which is really a great opportunity. So all those old tax records you want to dispose of confidentially and safely, and you can actually see it actually being done bring them out. Lastly, from an environment standpoint, trees. The township is sponsoring a tree giveaway. Um, it will be awarded to the first 70 residents who register for it. So if you submit and you're one of the top 70, you're going to win. If you haven't done it, go to the township website. All the details are there. Please participate in it because we want to keep Hanover green. That these, are, these aren't seedlings. These, these are, are trees. trees. These, yeah, yeah, these, 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 so the folks these know these, these are these are not you know twelve inch seedlings. These are actual trees from nursery. nursery yeah, stock. local local stock yeah. um, designed to um, to flourish in our community. Fantastic. And with all of the problems we've had, which Mr. Gallagher spoke about with the ash borer destruction, we really need to reforest. Wow, it does. Uh, just a couple quick ones. Uh, Board of Health met this past uh, Wednesday evening, uh, and uh, in their session, they uh, passed for Hanover Township, uh, which we uh, all worked together, the Township Committee and Board of Health, uh, certainly a lot of input over, over time from uh, Committeeman Gallagher on an issue that's uh, very sensitive to us, and that's on this matter of uh, vaping. Uh, we're very concerned with our youngsters and uh, vaping. We're certainly very concerned with these bootlegged oils and flavors that they're putting into vaping materials, uh, which are, in, in many cases, carcinogens. Uh, an ordinance was passed on first reading uh, this uh, past uh, Wednesday evening that prohibits and bans vaping, and there will be fines, etc., associated with retailers that carry these oils or sell these oils. Uh, Hanover Township once again stepped out front and uh, in the creation of this ordinance. We are hoping that other communities surrounding us follow this ordinance. Um, at this uh, particular point, um, we are sure many communities are working on similar languages, but uh, once again, I'm very, very proud of uh, the Board of Health. I'm very proud of this township council for supporting an ordinance like this to protect uh, the lives of children in our town, students in our town. Uh, if you missed the cultural arts program on uh, this past Sunday, where the Ukrainian dancers were there at the rec center, it was outstanding. The color, the culture, etc. They put on such wonderful events. There's so much going on in Hanover between our rec department, our cultural arts department, and so many of other areas. Uh, check our website. I keep saying that to you, but that's the place to uh, to go first and see. Um, I think that's it, gentlemen, for this this uh, this chair. So at this time, I'll uh, accept a uh, motion to adjourn. Right. Ron, can I make one more comment? Yeah, sure. Yeah. The uh, I just want to say we lost another uh, great individual this week. 
And the reason I couldn't go to the cultural arts was because uh, Mr. Evelyn from Hanover Park High School, oh, yeah. Yeah. he passed away. Uh, he was a wrestling coach, a football coach. He was a, a great, great mentor to a lot of us. And he also owns Varsity Driving School. And he's infamous for slapping the back of everybody's head when I did something inappropriate. <laughs> and I told him when he was teaching my son a couple years ago, I said, Mr. Evelyn, in today's climate, you can't slap the back of somebody's head anymore. And he laughed and said, why? But he was a great guy. He was a, a real town guy. He was uh, all about Hanover Park High School and Whippany Park High School. So we lost him. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you, Mr. Evelyn, for everything. We love you. And there's not a lot of Mr. Evelyn. So the Big E is going to be with us. And uh, he was also part of One Day One School, so we're going to keep him with us too. But thanks for letting me take that moment to thank Mr. Evelyn. Great guy. Not at all. Great friend of ours. Not at all. Motion for adjourned. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 adjourned. We'll, we'll. Thank you all. Yeah. Uh, I think we can we can do you see the agenda inside. We guys we 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 finished up. We're done. You're all right. We're done. 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 We're done